I'm free, looking out for better days. Just call it a raise, I'm hoping to rise. Love all my black sisters, let's collab, not collide. While our people provide light skin, dark skin, but we all on the same side. Come together on the same time. Dark and lovely, yeah, I love mine. Beautiful, we all, huh? Queens, we all, I must admit, and we will go far. Don't ever forget, yeah, I must admit. Black queens, we all. Dark and lovely, I am the color of beautiful. It is the repetition of affirmations that leads to belief. Once that belief becomes a deep conviction, things begin to happen. Muhammad Ali. I am in charge of my life. I am improving my life by eliminating the drama within it. I let go of everything and everyone that impedes my progress in life. I do not entertain negative thoughts, feelings, or conversations. I choose to be happy today. I am continually aligned with my higher purpose. I am strong. Welcome back. We are here with Colorism Conversations. And today we have the honor of talking with Omalara, who's a fashion designer who is living in Finland. So we are really excited about this interview. Welcome, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. We're so we're so excited about having you. So if you can tell our audience what you do and how you came to do it before we get into the colorism conversation. Okay. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Omolara Odediro. I'm based in Finland and uh, I'm a fashion designer. So my brand name goes by Evjoy Kucho. So the brand started officially in Finland in 2019. So how did I come about? Like it's a lifestyle fashion that have a fusion of African designs into Nordic. Um, in 2018, I had my first child, a girl. So basically, I was looking for something fashionable, something you know from Africa, like something colorful that I can use to style her. Of course, I used to be a fashion designer back home in Nigeria. Yeah, I'm from Nigeria, anyways. So when I moved to Finland <laughs> and I started business, I was looking for a way to like, after a while, when I get to know the people and the culture, I'm going to start my business proper. Well, I never knew it was going to start so soon after having my daughter, because I was like, okay, then the family, then business afterwards, you know. Then there was nothing basically for the girl because in the Nordics, of course, it's very cold and then there's no color, basically. They are usually white and black. So I went to this store and it was basically white, off-white, and then black. So I'm like, oh my God. So I see them that they don't actually give value for the money I'm paying because they are quite expensive, but then they are not like booming. Mm. So that was the start of the journey for Airjoy to show. So I, I went, of course, I have machine at home. You know, it never goes out of hand. Uh, if you're a fashion designer. So I was like, okay. So I, I started looking for the stores that sell material in Finland. So since then, yeah. So when we go to meetings and associations, people are always asking, where did you get her dress from? Because it's actually unique and then it's different from what we have in the random store. Right. So then I, I think it, it's time and I launched a collection and the acceptance was massive. So then Proceeded to register the business and then getting on, on stuff to do since then. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's the background that's really story. Right. So why Finland? 
Mm. Finland. Yeah, I one thing that actually uh inspired like that, that that I can say is an inspiration to move into Finland was because I have some family members there. So oh, I have okay. family ties. So when I was going to make a choice of going abroad to study from Nigeria, so it was like much easier, you know, when you have someone you can actually relate to it rather than starting all over with no family. So that was, then when I was going to, when I got to Finland and the educational system, because the, the educational system in Finland was one of the best in the world. So the teaching method and everything. So I was like, okay, still, I wasn't still planning to stay after graduation. Then my husband also moved over. My fiance then, but now my husband. So I was like, okay, I think we are building our family here for it. So let's see what Finland have to offer. And it's been good so far. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get information from you about how people can find your fashion and visit your website. Yeah. Your fashion, they're absolutely beautiful. They're absolutely amazing. And one of the things that's always wonderful about African fashion is the beautiful colors mm-hmm. and it's that your fashions are just amazing. So we're going to make sure that people know how to find you and to find your work so that we can certainly support you. So as we get into the um, colorism conversation, so I'd like to ask you um, what have been some of your experiences with colorism? And, you know, I don't know, um, you know, you can tell us about your experiences with colorism if you had any in Nigeria as well as Finland. Mm, colorism. This is a very important topic to me. You know, like I was saying earlier, when I was describing the fashion, I was like, everything was basically black and white, like there was no color. So I'm, I always have high colors. But now aside fashion, when it comes to human, I remember growing up in Nigeria, like when I see... Uh, sorry to say, like some certain set of people, like the Abinos and then the the fair kind of people. I'm always like, okay, like these these people are different, you know. Like as a child, you get attracted to them and basically mm. just that. But then in Nigeria, I can say there's hmm. We respect colors. We respect skin colors. We respect everybody. But I know there is this uh segregation which is to getting more education and enlightenment back home now. Like many people want to brighten their skin colors to feel accepted, to get a movie role, to get um, this modeling. But now we have a lot of black skin. Like we have a lot because I've seen people taking their stand like no matter their skin color, they're not going to alter anything or use any chemical or get themselves brutalized because of that. And then I've seen a lot of change to be sincere. Like there's been a lot of development in, in terms of that. Like black skins models are embraced. They are involved in movie roles. They can reach the peak of their career, just like the regular person. Too. So getting right. to Finland, yeah, because it's been a while now been to Nigeria sincerely. So of course we see, we see uh, media and all. So in Finland, uh, when I started studying, it was a bit of, I think we have five African students in class. So it was hmm, like there was a, so much attention. This is something I'm trying to replay the scene so I can know how well to describe. So there was so much attention because we look different. That's the word. So the experts... Right. To see something, you know, when other students are talking in class and you're like, okay, I don't think, yeah, everything has been said and all. I remember starting a project and someone said, um, he actually want to be in my group. He wants to see how, how it is working with a dark skin, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> so I think in my class and thanks to my study coordinator, she embraces our culture so well. And so it was much easier. And then after the first semester, and they see how intelligent, like it's not about the skin. 
it's about it's not about the skin color it's about what you can offer it's about what you have upstairs permit me to use the word in quotes so since then i think basically we actually don't have any problem and then when i was going to start launching the fashion brand also you know we are going to test market and people are like we don't think finnish people nordic people in the nordics we embrace too much colors they prefer the basic white and black and then brown. I don't think the business is going to succeed. I remember writing my thesis my, uh, when I was graduating. I wrote my thesis as my business plan. Then some of my teachers were like, do you think this can succeed in Finland? Because it involves so many colors. And then we are used to the basic, regular, bland, monochrome. So I'm like, let's see. Let's see if it's going to work. Let's see if it stands. And then, and it's been so encouraging. Even my teacher, I remember them writing me like, you did this. We are so surprised like these, like Finnish people can actually embrace colors. So colorism, hmm. I think because of what has been going on in the world, like so much enlightenment. And thanks to you also, you are doing an amazing job with this. Uh, program because I went to read the site and I was like, yeah, we need more of this. People need to know that just like in the high of a little child, like everything is just black and white. It's plain. So there is no segregation. Right. There is nothing. I remember a little child. I don't think she even know a difference like someone is dark skinned or someone is white or something. It is until we start teaching them, they have that knowledge. So I think when we have the plain view of how the world is, like we are all equal, we are all dark skinned. And then because of my skin color or my surname, having an African background, I couldn't get a particular job or I can't work in one industry. I think it's, it's not nice. So thank you for doing this amazing job. And yeah, it's been a great ride now in Finland that we have so many African entrepreneurs bringing African fashion, bringing African culture. And we are trying to infuse, bringing the colors. So it's like a spice that we can all work together. We can be the same, not minding the color. We can make the, the nation a better place. So that has right. been my time so far. Wow, that's amazing. That, that's really amazing. And so when you were doing your studies, you found that you you found that they were really more interested in your intelligence, right? Yeah. And in your skin color. Yeah. Of course, the and first so, semester wasn't that so good. Definitely, mm -hmm. because you know, it's like I was a total stranger to them. But my study coordinator was like given so many chances. Like we can always walk to her if we have any worries. So I have access to her and tell her, um, uh, Kaya, this is going on, this, this, this. And she's like, okay, I will rectify it. Like she made sure we are in a comfortable environment. Then after the first semester, and then they see these people are actually intelligent. I think so many things change afterwards. And now they, yeah. they learn to embrace and say, okay, it's actually not about the skin color. Is about right. the intelligence and what you can offer. Wow, that's amazing. That is really amazing. So, how has colorism affected you? And um, do you feel you've experienced colorism in Finland? Well, so you basically say you haven't really experienced colorism in Finland, though, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Well, that that's really great. So. Um, of community. course, we still do because after graduating, then we write out our CVs, we are looking for jobs. Like there's disparity in the marketplace. So people actually write out, we are looking for jobs, you want this position, you want this. Even in the IT industry, then because I, because I, I joined the group, you know, like international talent and all, like everyone is looking for a belter grammar and thing. But then you find out everyone share almost the same story. Like they see your CV, 
even though you you try to write in, but then the same person you are, maybe you even have a better grade or better qualification, but because you carry another surname that can actually easily point you out, that you are not Finnish or you're not white, that you are <laughs> afro fin or these or that, then, then you experience, you might not even, they will just tell you, oh, we are so sorry, we are pursuing this with another person. And then I've seen someone, an Haitian, she, she was even looking for uh, a lawyer that can help her fight this uh, employment battle because she got a contract already, they signed. She was meant to resume like two weeks and then a week to resumption and she was coming from another city. So she gave out her room, she already packed her stuff. She, basically she will be homeless if she's not moving to the capital city. Then they sent her an email to her that they are sorry they won't be pursuing the employment contract with her anymore. So she was like, she see it as because she's not finished or the baby because of her skin color or her surname pulled her out, something. I've seen people actually, as an adult, have to go and change their surname because right. they can speak Finnish. So they feel, it, by the time you see this surname and name, you will actually think <laughs> it's a Finnish until I come for an interview. <laughs> That's when you're going to know I'm actually black skin or Asian or Afro fin or something. So of course, right. I think it's everywhere. Yeah. Yes, I would definitely, definitely say it is everywhere. So yeah. um, how do you feel about your own skin color? I feel good. <laughs> okay. It's you're beautiful. Yeah, yeah definitely. Have you always, have you always felt Sorry? Have you always felt good about your skin color? Have I always been what? Have you always felt good about your skin color? Yes. The only time I always feel bad is when I have one skin issue, like chicken falls or something, because I'm I'm so particular about skin. I'm not a professional in it, but I just love looking good. Like just have a good skin color that you can always look good. Because basically, I don't know how to do makeup. I'm not. So when you don't have, I believe your good skin is the everyday makeup you need. Of course, then you can just you can just uh, add a touch of makeup if you have you find a professional that can do for you. So basically, it's good. So yeah, I feel good in my skin color. I'm definitely okay. That is good. Like, that is good. good. Yes, absolutely. Okay, we'll be right back. Like carefree, looking out for better days. Just call it a race. I'm hoping to rise. Love on my black sisters. Let's collab, not collide. While our people provide light skin, dark skin, but we all on the same side. Come together on the same time. Dark and lovely. Yeah, I love mine. Beautiful, we all, huh? Queens, we all. I must admit, and we will go far. Don't ever forget. Yeah, I must admit. Black queens, we all. Dark and lovely, I am. The color of beautiful, beautiful, oh. wonderful it may. The color of beautiful, beautiful, God made me beautiful. I am so beautiful. 
Welcome back. We're talking with Omar Lara here from Finland, and we're having a conversation on colorism. So how was colorism, how was the, were you, when you were a child, did your, did your family make you feel good about your skin color? Were there any problems within your family in regard, uh, um, regard to your skin color? No, we actually don't have that because both my dad and mom, dad and mom are both from Nigeria. So, and then I think we all took after the light chocolate skin color. So we never had any issue with that, with family members and everything. Of course, I've seen people, I have people around me that are insecure about their skin, that they had to bleach their skin at one point. But for Mm -hmm. us, it was never an issue in my family. That has been the color since day one. We only use normal cream, shea butter, like, yeah, basically. Right. Just to keep it glowing. The, the statistics say that 74% of the women in Nigeria do skin bleach. So how, how are you able to not fall into that idea of feeling like your skin had to be lighter? Was it something your parents instilled in you about the beauty of your skin? I think your circle really matters. The circle of friends you keep, they can actually influence your decision. So growing up, maybe thanks to my parents, we had like uh, the same family, family friends, uh, organizations that we are involved in, that we share common values. So mm. it was never an issue for us because, like I said, we have people in my estates, in my streets, from where I come from, that, but they are not our play. They are not our friends. They are not close to us. So we, mm-hmm. and you can't be friends with everyone because you live close to each other or something. So growing up, it was never an issue because I've seen our family friends. I've seen my cousins. I've seen my uncles. Those that are close to us that we sh- that we move closer to, it was the skin color was never an issue for us. So we were not. In, it was I think because we have similar people growing up together, so it wasn't much of a prayer. Because if if you see someone doing it and it's very close to you, you might want to give up, give give in to the to the prayer also. But for us, we we those that are close to us, we 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 were never prayer to do so. So there was no influence closer to us that can make us think of bleaching our skin. So they are just far away people we see on media, we see models or then someone living in the next street or something. Right. 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 That, that's great. That, that's so great to hear because I always felt that, yeah. um, you know, we look at, we hear from the United States. Mm-hmm. We look at people from Africa, and for me, I'm like, oh, you know, so incredibly beautiful, incredibly beautiful people. And so it was heartbreaking for me to find out that people who are in Africa feel like they have to lighten their skin. I think we, we, we have some here even, even though they are abroad, they are in Finland. They still, because we have, I see those products in African store. So I'm very sure if someone is not ordering them or buying from them, they won't be bringing them in. Mm. Because we have some of those products in African stores, some of those creams and then the soap and everything. So I'm very sure we have some people that that they still buy the idea, even though they are here and they think they should know better or something. And but one thing I found hard is some of them using the cream for their babies. So I try yeah. to anytime I notice, I try to in an organization or something, mm-hmm. I try to confront the not confront in a fighting way. Right. I try to like right. like this is a baby. They are beautiful naturally. They are just beautiful right. as they are. You don't need to arm the skin or something. So yeah. Yeah, so I think yeah. we still have people that try to brighten their skin also. Right, right. So how can language around skin color and skin tone be changed 
to reflect more positive value. I think that um, one of the things that I think is so important, mm -hmm. and I, I see it with with your fashion and everything that with the with the African influences and all of that, you're bringing a sense of pride mm -hmm. to, um, to to Africans and to um, those who are deeply melanated. So, how do you think? the language around color and skin tone can be changed to affect more positive goals? Mm. I don't think we actually need to change anything. Everyone is, to me, because like the African fashion thing, we have different colors. It's, it's just so diverse and huge. So if a particular color tone is not suiting you, another one will definitely. And I think there's no color that doesn't even suit. It depends on how well you're able to manage and style it. Definitely. So, mm -hmm. so everything that we, we should always look at the bright side of it. So I'm always, that's, and that was what helped, like trying to tell them as a thing, you can always wear African print. It's beautiful. You can make it into a winter jacket. You can make it, the print, the design into a swimwear. Like, yeah, last year I launched a swimwear collection and it was infused, like African print was infused into it, like the pattern, not the print. It was the normal swimwear material. But then we tried to infuse the African design into it. So, yeah. Right. Right. Okay, we'll be right back with Omar Lara. Welcome back. We are back with Omalara and we're having an amazing conversation about colorism. She is in Finland and we're talking about colorism and um, she's from Nigeria and she's in Finland now. We've been having this conversation. So when you think about, when you think about the beauty of deeply melanated skin, what is your, what is kind of your message for letting women who have deeply melanated skin know how beautiful they are. What would you say to um, a woman who might be struggling with the beauty of her deeply melanated skin? Hmm. My message, I, number one thing I would want to do is to hug them tightly <laughs> and let them know they are actually very beautiful in their skin. I know, uh, I won't want to engage them too much in deep conversation because it might be too emotional because 
Maybe they've experienced bully growing up. Maybe they've experienced loss of job or loss of loved one because of their skin color, because I know definitely there are things that influence people's decisions. Some have lost jobs, modeling jobs, uh, building their uh, movie career because of their skin color. So that might have influenced them going to tone their skin or brighten it. So I really don't want them to, I really don't want them to become emotional, but I'm going to tell them they are really beautiful and they should own their crown. Anyone that bullies them about their skin or that wants to make them feel less of themselves, it is not about them, it's about the person. The problem is about the person, not them. So they should raise their crown, dust it off and show the world the queen they have. So no one should make them feel they are less beautiful because they are really beautiful. So they have to just let the past be in the past and then move by. They just move forward and get things done. As the queen that she is, yeah. Yes. Um, so I wanna also ask you, how do you, How do you um how can I put this? How do you make women of color feel beautiful as far as fashion is concerned? I know that many times women who are deeply melanated tend to stay away from brighter colors. Um, mm -hmm. I know that for a long time there's certain colors I would not wear because I felt that it brought too much attention when I was dealing with colorism and the things that I had to deal with with colorism mm -hmm. and so. A lot of times I would not wear bright colors. So um, what would you say to, you know, the idea of color and how important it is to be able to feel good about yourself and feel confident in wearing the bright, beautiful colors that, um, that are part of African fashion? Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing about African fashion is that you can always have a twist up. Like you can always just, <laughs> you don't have to, it's versatile. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Like you can always just switch. So to every woman of color. Hmm. I you know this, this is one question I'm used to because people actually want to know like, I think color is beautiful. Color is really beautiful. And then for me, it's, it, it helps to, to express my emotions. It, it, it inspires me. Like I can, from where I come from before, from Nigeria, before, that was in the past, we always use, we always link black to sadness. Like we are mourning the death of someone special or something. So that was before actually, but now, even with black, you can just have a switch up, a black African print, the monochrome then. So I think it's, it's a way of expressing your emotion. It's, it's a joy carrier. Like colors just attract, like, because sincerely since I've been styling uh, little girls and birthdays and adults, anytime I have to just go through, like we are going to a set, or we're having an outdoor shoot and I'm just bringing out the dresses. I've, like there is always attention. People actually want to see and they're like, oh, wow. Like I'm used to the word Ihan Ameko. That is beautiful dress and finish. <laughs> and then they, they always want to stop by and then see. And some will be like, oh, where did you get it from? And I'm like, oh, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fashion designer. Can we get your contact, you know? So it's a way of just, it, it's an expression. So color actually expresses. So I think vibrant color is a way of just like now when winter everywhere gets dark, by two it's dark. It's, and then it's a way of just popping up, just showing you, it's like showing who you are, the joy you carry. So for me, I think women of color, you don't have to just, you can see like what I'm wearing now. It's actually colorful, but then we just try to like, you can just infuse this, something like something calm into it, not like we're just carrying everything around. So it's it's a way of just expressing the joy you have. They, I think Africa, like women of color, we, we have this tendency, we have from our, from where we come from, we have this joy in beauty. 
I think we just, we carry it around. So with our clothes, because yeah, the way you show up, people won't always forget. You might not even have to talk to anyone in a gathering, but then you know this woman that was wearing this something. So we, we know you, we carry the, the joy around. So it's, it's a way of expressing your joy. It, it's, it's just, it's good. Yes, it is. And I know when I put on, when I put on African clothes, I feel different. Yeah. I really do. I feel different. It, it, there's just something about putting on African clothes that, and, and anything that has a, a splash of yeah. um, cloth or that just makes you feel, yeah. it makes you feel different. Yeah. It gives you a whole <laughs> new sense of, of beauty. It really does. For yeah. me, it just gives me a whole sense of beauty. If I do a head wrap or whatever, mm -hmm. it's just, or does I, I the necklace, it's just something different. It's, yes. Yes. It, it, you feel different. Yeah. You just feel, you feel different. And it, it really is amazing. Yeah. And so now tell us about, tell us about F Joy Couture. Mm. Um, I know there's a special meaning behind it. So tell yeah. us about the meaning. Okay. <laughs> I'm from Nigeria again. So like, uh, it's a Yoruba word that was translated into English. So the word is fire or chemi, like pamper me with joy. Like, and I, like I said, like the African fashion is, is a joy carrier. Yeah, let me use the word. So, so F joy, like the, the I is joy, then the F in front. So it's a way of just, like we are ready to pamper everyone wearing the brand with the joy we carry. So that's basically how it's translated into. And the name, the name is the name of my baby sister but she's late now. So we started a fashion brand together in 2014, back home in Nigeria. In 2012, sorry. So she, she passed away in 2014. So, and then I had to name the brand after her. Like it's a way of keeping up her legacy. Like what we started together, my sister, I'm still doing it. And yet I'm extending it to the world. Right. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That is wonderful. So tell us how we can find you, how we can find your fashions. And you do you do um custom made also? Yes, basically. Basically, F Joy is in is into custom made. But then we try to make our uh, collections three to four times in a year. But then we do custom made all year. So the collection is just three to four times in a year. Just trying to show people like, oh, we have some stuffs that you can just all that also as ready to wear. But basically, we do we offer our services, custom made services for families because for families, for girls, for boys, for everybody, the, the female gender and the male. So basically, we, we like I said, we are giving joy to everyone. We are helping people to keep memories alive and to celebrate life. Every day is worth celebrating. So with our styling services, yeah. So to find Have Joy, we are present on all social media, on Facebook and Instagram, and then website. So F Joy is on Instagram as F underscore joy underscore future on Instagram. Then on Facebook, it's F Joy Stitches. And then our website is www.fjoyfuture.net. So you just write it together, www.fjoyfuture.net. So that's, those are the social presence that we have at the moment. Awesome. That's wonderful. Omolara, thank you so much for joining us. For thank you. This it's my pleasure to be on the show. It's my, like, yes, honor. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you being here and having this conversation with us and we're going to make sure that we follow you and that I, I, I'm looking forward to getting something me. Thank you. I'm looking I forward look to it. <laughs> I look forward to it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.
the color of beautiful. Live life carefree, looking out for better days. Just call it a rage, I'm hoping to rise. Love on my black sisters, let's collab, not collide. While our people provide light skin, dark skin, but we all on the same side. Come together on the same time, dark and lovely. Yeah, I love mine. Beautiful, we all, huh? Queens, we all. I must admit, and we will go far. Don't ever forget. Yeah, I must admit. Black queens, we all. Dark and lovely, I am the color of